as we are going back through the 12 spiritual principles. And, um, you know, it's not steps. Uh, everybody has to learn to walk. But it is navigation. It's learning to function from the originality in which Jesus paid for already on the finished work what the Son of God, Yeshua, has done for us. So we're grateful tonight for that as we began to navigate hope. Um, um, you know, one thing about hope is it says it's obtainable. That's what I love about hope. Hope by, by my navigation and understanding of the word, it shows me it's obtainable. But Jody, is one thing about it, I, I didn't always possess it. I just could see it. I could taste it. I didn't know how I was going to get there. But the, the, what I love is I began to understand the person. Holy Spirit, he began to show me how to possess by faith, amen? Um, so with that, we welcome everybody on live. As you come on, please share, tag, let us know you're here. We love you, we appreciate you. We're going to jump straight into this. Uh, our spiritual navigation when it comes to hope is came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Last week, we talked about honesty and that by being honest, it gives us the ability to what? Approach God. And when we approach Him honestly, then He begins to welcome us back in fellowship. We've seen this with a prodigal son um, last week. And I'm excited what God is doing um, and taking us deeper because we're in such a time and such a pressure. And it seems like it's getting darker. Uh, but when the, all you need is a little light when it's dark. If I need to go and find something and it's dark, I just need to find the flashlight. I need my cell phone to cut on the light. And with that, what I love about the word, it is the light. Um, so I'm excited tonight. I hope you can all hear me well tonight. Um, we are going to jump into this as our spirit. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves. That's one thing that is key. We must always, when we are focused on God, we must view Him. He's always greater than us. Like We have to approach Him in that mindset and in that posture. I want us to jump straight into Philippians 2 and 12. I see um, uh, Israel uh, from Wander on here. Welcome, man of God. Um, Philippians 2 and 12. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13 says, For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work his good pleasure. Now, I love this. This is one of the most um, uh, out of context. I've, if, if there's ever been a scripture people use out of context or almost like a place to... Uh, just try to get beyond or deflect it is this scripture. I hear so many people say I'm working out my own salvation. But if you understand in context what Paul was saying, he opens up talking about is there any if there's any love, if there's any consolation, I believe it means encouragement, if there's any fellowship, and we talk about honesty brings us back into fellowship with God. When you begin to look at this and look at it in context, where some people use it to remove themselves from church. Paul actually pins this to make you want. He's not pointing you to take and say, your hope is the church, your hope is Jesus, but the church has many members, he says, in multiple different uh, epistles. So we must understand, um, uh, welcome uh, Sandra, welcome, welcome. Um, when you look at this, you must understand that he is saying salvation with fear and trembling. Well, if you want to understand how unity will show up and clarity and oneness will show up is when we all really fear God. When we all come into a place as an audience of one, but we understand the power to gather. The power that when we come together, because I guarantee you, everybody in the room, everybody online, whoever it might be that may watch this in the future, you may be revisit your notes when you do the worksheets and stuff. When you look at this, at some point, you're going to be hoping that something will come into place. I believe it's in um, Proverbs, it says, hope to Right? Hope deferred. That means it's on. It almost like, is it coming? <laughs> it's delayed, right? But I have a responsibility to the hope. Amen. And that's what I, we want to break down tonight. And so when you begin to look at this, 
and it talks about work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, is saying virtually what I hear in Revelation, what are you doing personally for your spiritual growth and your development? To what? To keep you as one with God and the body. Now I could, you know, you know the American dream. Just go to college if you can get the right uh, credentials, or you can get the right education, or you can get the right. And I'm not against education, but if you can get all of these right things in place, you're successful. But Paul flips in a society with the Philippians and he tells them, look, what are you doing? What is your focus right now with your spiritual growth? If you're emotionally bound, it's hard for your spirit to what? You be growing in the spirit realm. You are growing more emotional, right? Suppressing more emotions if we're not careful. We can have a mind that's spinning out on things and get caught up on something that's got us distracted, right? Getting our attention. I'm going to help y'all real fast. Let me help y'all. Look at your natural day. Look at what you leave around and what you put up. Look at how you got things organized. Look at how you really go about. Think about this. Now, I have no issue with caffeine. I have no issue. Now, if you're addicted to it, that's a problem. Let me tell you the number one factor if you're addicted to caffeine. You must have it before you take and got a good attitude in the day. Or when you're in a place that you're tired, and the only way that you can get, I don't know why he's going to caffeine, but only way that you can now begin to flip and have uh, you feel like being around people is now I need that feel better that because what it does it releases endorphins right because caffeine is your body out automatically makes it right so I'm not against coffee so don't hear what I'm not saying I'm not I don't I don't agree with like those crazy monsters and stuff like that but what I am saying was this anything that you put in place without a uh, without God's voice putting it in place. Does that make sense? You depend more on it to go. So this is how I broke it. I can remember, I had an issue with coffee at one time. And I can remember saying, man, i got to go make me a cup of coffee before I do anything. And I was like, man, I am putting that as a power to give me the ability to go. Now, caffeine in my natural, but we're going beyond the natural. Remember, spiritual navigation. A power greater than me, right? So do I just want to have the emotion and attitude for a moment or does my spirit rise? How can I say, okay, Holy Spirit, what you want to do? How are we going to do this? Um, so welcome. Uh, I see Melvin on here. Welcome, man. Um, so I want you to look at this. What is your spiritual growth in the belt? What are you asking God? What is the intentionalness of today? What are we doing today? If you can always just start your... That's very sobering. I promise you, you'll be like, whew. And then you can go make a pot of coffee after you began it with God. Does that make sense? I, I'm trying to get you somewhere. It may not be that. It may be social media is the first thing. It may be looking at your bank account. It might be um, uh, uh, um, something to the regard to, oh goodness, I can't... I got to begin this day. I got to get the kids stuff. I got to get... Uh, uh, I've had times I gotta get this, 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 this done with the business, whatever it is. But I could have prepared for that the day before. Does that make sense? I'm trying to get get us somewhere to depending on Holy Spirit, and He prepares us. And then when we don't have it all together supernaturally, He will help us overcome. Amen. Yeah. So, what are you? If you don't care, put that in the actual um, things. What are y'all doing for your spiritual growth and development? That keeps us one with God and the body. So, he draws this in context to three places. He talks about the mind, character, and it's all accessed by faith. But I love this. If you, I'm going to skip the one scripture towards the end here. It says this. It says, um, and character. Yeah, character. It says this right here. But you know, where's it? Here we go. But you know his proven character that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. He's talking about Timothy here. 
Therefore, I hope to send him at once. What is he saying? Remember, hope, I am, that's my obtainable. I, that's something I can obtain. So he said, I hope that I can put Timothy, because y'all saw him serve as a son to a spiritual father. He's given us an example of character. He's given us an example of oneness operating together, which is what Jesus done, the Son of God done with the Father, the perfect example through the Gospels, right? And so it, before that, it goes, every knee shall bow. It goes into all this stuff. It gives us the gospel of what that looks like. And it comes into a place to give us this. That just as he demoted himself and gave up everything and put himself in position to redeem us, is now saying, I can't now go, now go to work out my own salvation. And it's... Yeah, you might be doing some things different. God may have you in a different season. God may be putting His finger on something now that is proven the character that somebody else can see to bring hope to them. So He's saying this, I'm going to send, my hope is to send Timothy that his character, his faith, and his oneness shall be an example to you. So, God wants us to face life sober-minded so that we can have an honest chance to make good choices in life. We cannot make clear decisions if we have poison. When we talk about addiction, um, addiction is a toxic compulsive behavior. When you are feeding yourself, and it could be anything, remember a toxic compulsive behavior, I didn't just say drugs. I didn't just say alcohol. I didn't just say pornography. I didn't just say one thing. I am saying, what is it that is toxic, compulsive behavior because it's producing, right? Something that I'm codependent, an idol, something that I'm calling a power higher than me, but I say Jesus is Lord, right? Our Holy Spirit guide me, right? I'm not saying this to beat you up. I'm saying this will you let Holy Spirit come bring you to a place of fear and trembling because when it does, he says this. He says this, you have the mind as he. What you're thinking is where you're headed, right? So, if I can get my mind focused in a place that I can now make clear decisions. How? Because I have His mind. We cannot make clear decisions when we feed ourselves this way. It contaminates our spirit, soul, and body. Isaiah 40 and 28, um, 28 says, Do you not know? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired? His understanding is inscrutable. Uh, he gives strength to the weary. So if you're weary tonight, guess what? Your hope is he gives strength. Uh, his understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary. And he who lacks might, he increases power. So if you feel like you're lacking in power, you guess what? He will give Power, the ability, right? I love the power of God. It comes in a form of fire. What I love about fire is this. It gives you the ability. Um, how do I say this? When power shows up, miracles show up. So if if you're lacking in a, if, 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 it's virtually saying something that natural law, there's no way this could take place. But when it yields to God, or it yields to the Son, Timothy, I'm coming at, sending him as an example, it will take what was impossible by natural law, and it turns it, it flips it, it brings it into fruition, right? Now this is the other thing of power. It gives you the ability to endure. I don't know about y'all, but I've been in a season, I feel like, where if I really had to endure, some things. It's, it's come in different ways. It didn't come the way. And I ain't talking about the devil. Well, I, 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 at times, maybe. But I'm talking about trials and tests and different things that we face on day to day, right? More responsibility, expansion, stretching. Uh, all of that, when it comes, fire gives you the ability to endure the new. We always want the new. We want what is ancient of days Christ, in Christ Jesus, right? But it takes the fire to endure. So, when we look at this, if you're lacking in power, guess what? Your hope is he has more. He has power. Verse thirty. Though youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly. Okay. Well, if you youth, you feel tired. 
Or if you're the oldest person and you still feel tired. Your hope is he will flip tiredness and he'll give you energy. He'll give you strength. He'll give you power. He gives you the ability to keep going. If you have stumbled badly, guess what? Your hope is he gives you the ability now to have wisdom not to stumble again, right? Um, yet those who wait for the Lord will get again new strength. They will mount up, on, up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Now what I love about eagles is represent, representation of the office of the prophet. But everybody's not a prophet. There's not as many as we think there is. But the prophetic is opened up to everybody. It's the heart of the Father. My hope is, is not my function. My hope is, is I am a son of God. My hope is that you are a son or daughter of the Most High. So my hope is not to, I can, I, I'm so accurate, right? My hope is, is that I come into his accuracy of his voice. My hope is, is because of this, my perspective changes. My perception is changing because what? My hope is in Him. Right? So when I look at this, remember, wait does not mean you're not doing anything. But prepare. Remember? What are we doing as far as our spiritual growth and development? What are you putting in right now? What is God speaking? Because this is the thing. When it comes to the prophetic, we live in the future. God gives us glimpse into the future. And He'll take us so far, and then He come brings us back, and He says, now you must prepare you got to prepare. you got to prepare. These are certain responsibilities for the manifestation of this. Okay? And so God would, would not put you on an island if he didn't have you give you the ability at some point to go to the next island or back to the, the shore. Does that make sense? Uh, or a, a, another land. He would give you the ability at some point at the right divine moment to be able to travel. So when we look at this, what are you doing right now? What is your what is it you're preparing with? Think about it. It could be budgeting. It could be um, vision. It could be certain one of these prints. Some maybe honesty. It could be just the fact that this God help me be more be more honest than that. It could be that literal. That is that's as simplistic as that is. It is all you need, right? It's all you need because as honest as I am, that I'm in fellowship and I can access. What I'm open for. So, every step with God, there is deeper levels of intimacy. Intimacy removes self reliance. Self reliance is your own power and resources, so it removes it, which prepares you for the next step. When you hope, when I, um, I mean, going into faith yet. So, when we look at this and we're really coming into a place and we're learning to walk with God, we're hoping Him to obtain. That which is already paid for and that which is already meant for you personally. Amen. Character through the mindset that's already been given to us, the mind of Christ, to being one with each other when we know that we got multiple personalities, right? Multiple different backgrounds, walking through multiple things. So what I want you to hear is this. He's got everything prepared, but are you preparing for what He's sending to you? God really wants to help you. You must remember this. It don't matter how free you get, then all of a sudden He's telling you you're taking a supernatural step and it's over here and you think, how? Oh, this don't even make one lick of sense. I ain't saying do this. What you must understand is this. My hope is because His voice is positioned me here, He'll prepare me for what He showed me. I learn this every time when God brings me into a new place or a new season or a next step of um, faith that He's preparing me. Before faith ever comes into place, there's a hope established. I'm hoping for this, right? So, think about this. Even Peter walking on water, he stepped out. His hope was to get to it, so he was walking by faith. But then his hope come, I'm drowning. Right? Our key comes down as we keep our eyes locked. It doesn't matter. When you look off, you just got to look back. You got to remember where your hope comes from. So, 
when we began to walk in this, God, um, you got, you must remember, He has been waiting for your complete surrender. So you can be in a new place with God and really not surrender to Mary. That he's asking for, right? Because this is the evidence of the Lord. It's his, it's his Holy Spirit is the Lord of glory, right? In Corinthians. So every time I go to a deeper place in intimacy through communication, that's where it's birth, right? When that takes place, when he communicates, that means I probably want to surrender something. And it may not even be something that's so bad sometimes we think like, I'm not a drug addict no more. I'm free. I'm the son. Right? I'm not bound to pornography no more. I'm not bound to that. You know what I'm saying? It's not those things. But the key of, okay, you will surrender your attitude. You're frustrated. You know good and well you got, it was wrong, but you see what I'm saying? Can I surrender it and get to a place of soberness? One thing that Ashley and I have really been working on in everything we do is we try not to express ourselves too much in the midst of mixed emotions about something, but to revisit and have hard conversations, which then gives us the ability to our household and everybody else connected, because then we are what? We are speaking from a sober place. Remember, approach life sober. The only way you stay sober in the spirit, I'm not talking about natural drug now. I'm talking about sober in the spirit and your emotions is you must live a life of surrender. Amen? Amen? So, we have to understand we cannot beat or win against any addiction. We said that. Um, now, the, now facing the truth that we cannot fix our problems. It don't matter how anointed, how powerful you are, you can't fix your problems. You, you're not, he is the fixer. Right? Now, how do I see the release or the fullness of the hope in which I'm facing? It's because I come responsible to the hope that has been spoken. How do I find that? What I'm lacking in is in the Bible. I read the Word. I find the hope, which then I come responsible when I begin to become responsible to the hope of the high calling. Then it gives me the ability to what? Fake that some moment to come into place. And we're not to fake it, that's next week. But you see how these things build, right? Um, so, now facing the truth that we cannot fix our problems, um, that self reliance, which is dependent on our own power and resource, is a false idol. At the root is pride. When we walk through these areas of life, a lot of times, it's not pride of like sometimes what we think when we think of pride. Survival is pride. I'm going to just make it through this day. And that is a good mindset to start with, but I must have spiritual development and now applying myself in areas that go beyond the surface of that. Let me get to a place because when I understand or see the hope of Him, it gives me the awareness of Him. If I have the awareness of relationship with Him, this is one thing I've learned. No matter what, whoever I hang out with, you will see me pick up their language. You will see certain nonverbals that will begin to pick up. You will see even, I mean, even clothing to a certain degree maybe. And I'm not saying, uh, somebody asked me one time, I began to uh, go into a, a new circle and a lot of them were like, uh, What's those, what's those tight jeans or whatever you call them? Skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. They said, you're going to start, you're going to get you some skinny jeans next? That's what this guy, this guy was aggravating me or whatever. And I said, well, I mean, I don't even know what my response was. But I got a pair of skinny jeans now. That's probably since 2017, 18, that was said to me. Do I wear them every day? No. My point being is, the more you hang out with Jesus, the more you spend time with the Holy Spirit, the more you surround yourself with people that are fit, their eyes are fixed on hope, the more then you begin to acquire what everybody else is. Sometimes you just need to get next to somebody. You don't know what they're... That, you know how it is when you can feel the weight of somebody? Or you feel the discouragement of somebody? Look, you just need to get... To somebody, you need to get around somebody that it is encouraged. Trina says, if there is any, that's why I opened that up. Because this is the key. 
If I can position myself and have awareness that I'm in the body even though I feel this, that I'm still in Christ Jesus, the hope of overcoming my emotions began to come into place. My imaginations, are, which I've seen that may not have been fullness of what really I was supposed to see. You know, your imagination, you begin to see things. All of a sudden, your fear tries to attack and you're like, ooh, where'd that come from? No good oil in one God, right? When you get around people, when you begin to press into prayer and press into God, not religiously to know, but to what? Go and dealt with Him. I'm spending time with Him. It gives you the ability to step in to that which is missing. That hope begins to take its place. So, remember our spiritual navigation came to believe a power greater than ourselves that restores to sanity, right? Romans 8 and 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life. That's my hope. If He raised, I believe it. Then you can't tell me no different. Right? I believe anybody here on this, uh, probably even on this live, if not, all you need is just a moment. All you need is just a second, an encounter from the living God. You must understand then, now I must now go back to the hope that if He pulled me out of that, He'll pull me out of this. Right? I heard somebody was preaching not too long ago, and they said, some people want to be pulled out of every mess they get in. They want to be pulled out of this, this, and this every time they turn around. And, and, and one thing he, he, he really expounded on, he didn't say it in his language, but what I was hearing in the spirit, sometimes you just got to learn to get up out the mud hole and walk out of it. Sometimes we turn to quicksand, uh, a mud hole into quicksand, it's really just a mud hole. It's dirty, uh, it, it's messy, but we just get up. When we get up, we walk out with our wine because he got up. Amen? But it goes on to say, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation. He didn't say, it said obligation. Not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if you live by the Spirit, you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live. So we have to stop and say, are we living according to the flesh or, or to the Holy Spirit? Is our flesh dying? Because this is the key. I can get filled with the Holy Ghost, but I want to stay in overflow of the Holy Ghost. A sign of overflow of the, uh, overflow of the Holy Ghost is because you can die. I think a perspective prophetically is when I'm weary, I have the perception or the perspective because of my hope is the fact I know the difference of a demon in my flesh. My hope is I know he already conquered death, sin, and the grave. Okay? Hell, you don't have hold of me. Sin, you don't have hold of me. Be obedient children, he said. But how do I navigate back? Because I must get honest. Am I living according to the flesh? Our Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? So, now that we have found our hope, we have to continue in every second learning how to trust God. What I've learned through my experience and observed from others, trusting God can be challenging because we wonder if He really will or wants to help us, or will He do it in a way we know want him to. So we want it now. Right? Faith says I can have it now, but I don't understand the fullness of the hope that I need for it now. Hear that. Because hope gives me the lens of what I need. Hope gives me the character. Hope gives me the mindset. Hope gives me the ability to see if I'm to obtain something of God, I must be able to see it, right? I know Him better. I know Him not just in His power, but in His death. So if I can hope to the fullness, and that's, y'all understand that that's a continual thing. But if I've got that pursuit and hope, I might be hoping that God would resurrect this and He's saying, Mary, 
I would not be hoping that God would say, I will, I will see this thing come about the dry, these dry bones out of the valley. And he said, that's nothing. Only way that's going to take place is a testimony, but it isn't going to be a part of your artillery. Does this make sense? It'll come artillery in the spirit to reach somebody, but it won't be something of how you think you're going to make it to the next. So, when we look at we have to continue every second. We won't, we won't, let's, let's visit this part. It says, because many of you know he will help you, right? He is my help. Right? Because sometimes I'll say this, and like, I know he's my help. But come on, when you have emotion, you beat down, you know you heard it clearly. Come on, the emotion is playing off. Everything seems like it's squeezing in. Come on, I'm in the room. I feel it right now. Everything is just, it seems like it's overcoming you. But can you remember and hope He is the great I Am. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is the Prince of Peace. See, that's hope. You feel His presence begin to increase. That's hope. I begin to decree and I begin to declare. And now I can have awareness of the fullness of the hope. Blessings to you, Ms. Cheryl. Ms. Miller, blessings. When we look at this, what about this? He'll do it in a way we don't want him to. Right? <laughs> Whew. It's not that you can't believe him for it, but he's wanting. He says, Look, I know you'd settle for this, but be an obedient child because I got something way greater than this. I'm not even talking about material things right I'm talking about living from a place that he went and made a place for. Does that make sense? I'm talking about your spirit residing in Christ Jesus to be able to navigate the sea perspective-wise now. So, we want help, but we also want to control that help. That's, that's pride, right? Why do we do that? Is because we're learning that if you can understand more of who God is, then you'll that will dwindle. That's what I'm saying. We're in a place and an era and a time that the Bible is read and truly preached in context less than ever. In America anyways. The key is if you're a son of God, you should have to be told to reach for her, right? And that ain't, that, ain't being, that ain't a jab, that ain't a nothing. This is very real. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't have to tell um, Luke, don't touch that hot eye. Right? right? I don't have to tell him that. Why? Because I view him in where he can be left in a place because I trust him. I told him this the other day. I told him, I said, I have no reason not to trust you in that area. This is what happens. This is where the fullness of hope not understanding, or not understanding hope in an area. And we always are growing in this. When we view things from our past of what we've done or how we've done it, or we view through the lenses of how other people are doing it, and you don't look through the lenses of God in that moment for that individual, you are actually stepping out of the will of God. Ain't that what it said in the scripture talking about to do his will in us? Verse 13, right? In its fullness. So I can cap or almost steer you left or right if I don't take and see the hope that you need. Remember, a body. We're not just talking about our hope of being set free. We're set free. Thank you, Jesus. But not only set free, staying free, and then helping others walk in freedom or the will of God. Right? So, when we look at this, um, We want help, but we also want to control the help. So, God standing waiting for us to hit rock bottom and surrender. 
The only way to total deliverance is to do it His way. According to John 14 and 6. God is all-knowing, so He is waiting for us to exhaust our efforts first. It's much like a child tying their shoes. Believe me, there's been times in this season, it's like God said, just pull it this way and the knot will come out. It's one thing to tie the shoes, another thing when you double knot that thing. Or if somebody else does in their body, they double knot it, because your double knot is different than my double knot. I don't, I mean, everybody don't do a double knot the same way, right? Everybody don't tie a shoe exactly the same way. And so how it was tied, it must be untied the same way. Right? My hope is that is the ability to tie or untie, no matter who tie. Does that make sense? Because we function as one. That's our hope, is that oneness. So, when we, when we navigate through this, we must make sure also is in the natural. You know how it is. You get frustrated with the little one or whatever else. And man, are you really just, are your, your heart so compassionate? Like, man, you just spent an hour or 45 minutes trying to learn how to do that. And if you would have just listened, but they got it, right? That's sometimes what we do um, with God with certain things. So if we're honest, we do the same thing, right? Everybody agree? Um, we have to remember the only way is through the gate, which is Jesus, Yahshua, the Son of God. The Father sent Holy Spirit. He is a helper. Now remember, our hope. If we are to walk in hope, and Holy Spirit is sealed us and filled us, and now is overflowing us, we must know Him in every aspect of who He is. So your hope in one season might see Him as helper. The next one might be comfort. The next one maybe is eternal spirit, right? You're beginning to look in the future. You're beginning to live. You're beginning to draw timelines. You're beginning to say, I'm preparing for five years, but I'm not bound to what I think five years should look like, but I'm reaching out, God. I'm praying. Um, for He begins to put burdens for other places, other regions, other nations, other people, um, family, whoever it might be. See, now you are, it's eternal. I will live with Him the rest of my life, but I'm not waiting on the cloud. I house the cloud, so the cloud has the ability for what is in three years from now. Amen? That's my hope. Truth. What is it that is fractured in my life? Spirit, soul, or body, or around me, or the assignment of me, that I need truth. Because it's one thing to get hope. It's another thing to lead people into holiness. Right? You think, man, I was a knucklehead back there. I can remember where I needed to surrender. I see the illumination of why and the perspective of certain things I walked through because that's the key. When you overcome something, you may not, you had the hope to overcome it, but when you become that went from, um, uh, I guess, assignment to own assignment, then you're like, ooh. My hope now has to come into another place because now it's not me overcoming, it's me helping overcome. Is this helping anybody? And the place of my perspective must change. Um, him giving us strength in those times. So, you must know him as deliverer. Amen? I promise you this. You go through deliverance, you go through levels, and you become responsible to your deliverance. But if you don't know him as the deliverer, what will happen is this. You will get in the way of somebody's deliverance. Just because he delivered you this way don't mean he's going to deliver them that way. Just because you snapped out of one thing this way, and but you had a process of this over here walking, work out your own salvation. It's giving you hope that their salvation is in its fullness. But how you walk beside them might not be in the fullness of what you had to walk through, but you got the tools of fixing your eyes on the hope, the finished work. Amen? The deliverer. What is the deliverer? He delivers me out of anything that would entrap me. Flesh, demons, agree, false agreements, wrong agreements. Does that make sense? So, 
I want you to, if you hear nothing else, Holy Spirit is a companion. He guides us into all truth of Himself and us. In other words, who is Him? He is God. So He brings us, He's like, Jesus walked the earth. And now, because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, it's now Jesus sets it on every one of our hearts. It's like the multiplication of Jesus um, to, to, to make us gateways into the earth room. So, we must understand God wants to help us more than we do ourselves. True reality is we can't help ourselves but surrender and, and but we true reality is we can't help ourselves. But surrender. The only way you can help yourself in its fullness is surrender. When I surrender, I have the ability to the help. I have or I have access and the ability of the help. So this is what I want us to say together, no matter where you're at. Even online. I cannot fix myself, but I desire the one who loved me first. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to this part currently in me that you're revealing to me. Will you encounter me? I'm tired of change because I'm subject to change back. I surrender this area. Will you transform me in the name of Jesus? Then we must find truths about Him and, and us and read and study and prophesy them over ourselves until our mind is restored to what God thinks and creates me. So think about this. You could encounter Him in a way of deliverer, but you have the perspective of the deliverer. So in other words, He could supply, but do I have the mind of the supplier? I have access, but can I now... Have, can I access that part that I not only he redeemed it, but I can also walk in the redemption of it? So, just going back a lot of times, God, honestly, this is what I, I, I've learned over the years. And I, I've caught myself personally doing this uh, at different times. We treat God like a black, uh, what do they call it? A uh, sugar daddy or sugar mama. We treat it. God, give me this. God, I need this. God, I want this. God, I want this. What I need to do then is go in to say, if He said He'll supply our need, what is needs? What is wants? Because if I can know the difference between a need and a want, my hope is no matter what, at the last moment, I won't go hungry. My kids won't go hungry. My wife won't go hungry. None of you will go hungry. Right? Because that is a guarantee. There's times that I got, some of you, you'll come to me and you'll say, should I do this in this next step? And I'll say, well, does that fall underneath or won't? If it falls underneath, you've got to take the step. Your hope is that He is the supplier. Your next thing after that, that you have the awareness of the fullness of hope which you obtain, will be faith, right? I'll step in this. I've done my part, right? A lot of times we wait and and God is saying, I'm waiting on you. I already got it. Right? Let that be in your You tired? He got strength. You bound? He got deliverance. You hurt? He's got holiness. You fatigue? He'll restore it right instantly. Amen? So, I think a lot of times, we feel a little better, and so we kind of step back, right? Anybody ever done that? I feel, ooh, I was under this, right? This, uh, and then I get distracted by everything that had me distracted again. That, look, that, that's why sometimes things are hope deferred. It's because we're not responsible to the hope that's obtainable. And that's what Paul was telling him. Welcome, welcome, welcome. No. Amen. So, when we look at this and we think about hope tonight, this ain't to, to beat anybody up. This ain't to discourage you. This is honestly to establish hope in you. Because I don't want the finger to be on hope delayed anymore or deferred anymore. 
I want you to see the fullness of your hope. And it may not come the way you want it. It might not come as fast as you want it. It might not have the, uh, 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 the, it may not look the way you wanted it. But the guarantee is, if he said it, it's guaranteed. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, with that, it all comes to this. I want you to understand when we come down to, as we're closing here, is knowing the person. Holy Spirit. Knowing Him in such an intimate way. And seek is going to be your responsibility that brings you into a, such an intimate place with Him. This is what's going to happen. It's going to kill your flesh. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to frustrate certain things in your life. This is one thing I've learned. You pray for something, or begin to decree and declare something, you'll see the manifestation of flesh and demons. Every time. You know why? Nothing, you can see something, but a lot of times because it's a body thing and not just a eye thing, right? You must have the ability and the perspective to see, this is our hope, that that individual might not know it. They might not even be aware. They may even think the thing's dead or buried. But when you pray, it will come into manifestation and then you have the ability to what? You can either get frustrated at each other, put a divide in between each other, or you come into agreement with what you was already, whoever was praying was already praying, right? That's what Paul's writing. He's writing them a letter. This is communication. Communication in letter is what? Intimate. He is expressing his heart and access to everything that is available. So now that we communicate, you might, Luke may pray for uh, Haley today. And then Luke may see the, what he prayed in a level like, have you ever prayed for somebody, I'm not saying anything got worse, but I'm just using an example. Have you ever prayed for somebody and seemed like it got worse? Can I tell you that's the progression that things are about to break through? But we don't have that perspective. I'm tired. Why ain't it broke through yet? I've been interceding. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I understand. Can you go back to your hope? He went into Gethsemane. He said, your flesh is weak and your spirit, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. There must come a place and a time that we can push beyond our flesh. We push into a place that demons can't even reside. And we have a hope established and we still understand, man, this is going to be rough. Because if you know Gethsemane, you also know political persecution all the way to his peers and the people he's there dying for. Oh, talk about his own bloodline. To Galgotha. The whipping post. To going up the hill. To hang it on the cross. But still in the midst of all that, speaking over to the other man on the cross. Says you'll be with me too. Amen? That's hope. This is not easy. Let this encourage somebody online. This is not an easy walk. It, nothing in the Word says it's easy. Other than His yoke is light and His burden is easy, right? What does that mean? He is a burden that He places on you has all sufficiency of fulfillment of a finished work. But your flesh will have to die for your spirit to reside and elevate. That's what this life looks like. So be encouraged tonight. We're about to go into a, uh, a time um, in the next part of this service that uh, you have to be here to be a part. So we love you. We appreciate you. Mel, thank you so much. Uh, I see uh, Evangelist Larry on here. Freddie, welcome, man of God. We love you. Appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, and y'all have a great night. Go back and watch the replay.